Are we live? Yes, I think we are. Here we go. Good morning, Marcus. Yep, first on parade, Matt, Helen, good morning. And then it goes fast, Sandy, Chloe, good morning, everyone, Amy, Sarah, Michelle, Leanna, it goes so quickly then I can't keep up. Anna, um, Andy, Lorraine, yep, Daniel Martin, good morning, Angel, Alex, Naomi, good morning, Libby, Helen, Michelle, yep, Claire, good morning, Amy, Abby, good morning, Lucy, yeah, I know that you're all, all together, social distancing. Um, good morning, Helen, Matt, yes, Angie, um, Beverly, good morning. Yeah, good morning, Gary, and he's saying good morning to everyone else as well. That's lovely. Jesse, Jay, good morning, everybody. Let me have a look at uh, um, where we are. I know approximately how many people should be in the room. We're about half the people in the room so far. So uh, good morning, Perry. Nice to see you. And Ian, good morning. Yes, good morning. I'm showing off a bit this morning with my blue glasses on to go with my blue dress. I shall change my glasses in a minute because these are not the best ones for me to these are not my reading they're my bifocals morning jane for about the third time morning georgia maria good morning yes um declan answer his email he said um jody good morning good morning good morning yes brenda good morning i'm sure maria's with you too marie's with you too yeah beth good morning morning tracy nice to see you this morning Glad to have you all with us. We've got some exciting stuff today. Christine, good morning. Hi, Kay. She's busy trying to deal with all those clients, demanding clients. Morning, Francesca. Bethan, good morning. Beautiful little video, Bethan, that you did. I looked at you. I felt so proud. You look absolutely amazing. And you did it so beautifully, confidently. Wonderful. Um. The world doesn't revolve around Matt. It does. Um, Nicole, good morning. Uh, do you know what? I've just realised how many of you that I've already spoken to today or messaged or... Um, uh, morning, Mags. I, I've just realised how many of you, yeah, this morning that we've already had some kind of, you know, we've touched or whether it is. Okay, so we're about... Um, uh, we're about... Um, two thirds of the people in the room. So I'm going to get going. We're four, four minutes past 11. And uh, I'm going to try not to touch my computer too much today because um, as those of you that uh, are tuning in regularly will know, sometimes that's when things start going wrong. My computer that Declan keeps telling me I need a new one, but I'm not keen to um, to uh to move to a new one i don't like new phones and i don't like new computers um and you may notice that uh, today i'm coming live from our passion for hair academy um and this is going to be our venue for the next um couple of weeks we've got some exciting news for you um for programs coming to you over the next couple of couple of weeks as we move forward towards opening so i feel like i'm starting this morning uh, a bit like a newscast um but um i want to make sure that uh you know, we're all up to date with what's going on. So, of course, non-essential shops were able to open yesterday. I am going to change my glasses um, because otherwise I keep peeking out through the bottom of the bifocal, you know. I just wanted to wear the blue ones for a change. Um, so, um, yeah, so non-essential shops opened yesterday and for the most part, um, you know, that went off. Or was it the day before? No, it was the day before, wasn't it? Two days ago. And for the most part, that went off, um, you know, went off uh, quite well. And so we wish um, our high street colleagues um, the best of luck with getting their businesses going. Um, now, of course, not everybody has opened and that's interesting, but... Uh, um, Yesterday, Boris Johnson, uh, in his uh, briefing, he did talk about his road map and, um, uh, and he did say, although there was a bit of confusion, I think, about what he said, but what, what he did say was that they are, uh, as long as all the uh, signs are good, the five signs, and they are at the moment, they're committed to sticking to that road map for uh, July the 4th. And so signs are looking good for us, I believe. 
for opening on July the 4th. So let's keep our fingers crossed for that because most certainly it's what we need. It's what the economy needs. It's what the high street needs because, of course, we're, if we're allowed to open, so are restaurants and cafes and hotels, um, uh, you know, all those kind of things. So please, um, the universe, let that be the case. Now, one of the big changes in uh, something that is uh, that the government have announced um, is, uh, and, and again, this was released on Monday, this information. Uh, they announced it last week, but they actually released the information on Monday. Um, and that is the big change to the furlough scheme. So the furlough scheme is set to continue until October the 31st. Um, but of course, from July, um, from the end of July, so from the 1st of August, the scheme, um, uh, well, actually, the scheme changes from July the 1st, uh, and then every month there is a change. So this is something for the employers um, amongst us need to really keep our eye on. Um, there's, a re there's a reason, of course, why they're doing what they're doing. It's a big reflection on the government's outlook for the economy, um, which is... Uh, um, you know, it's not so good. Uh, the Guardian, um, I quote, have said that the unemployment outlook is grim. So, um, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that people are going to be losing their jobs and already we're seeing that. Um, and uh, that um, also there's a significant uncertainty about the UK economy. In fact, uh, the economists predict that the UK economy for 2020, so by the time we get to the end of December, we're going to see an 8% shrink in the UK economy. And that might not sound like a lot, but it is a lot. So when the, you know, the economy shrinking by 8%, that is not good. Now, I don't want us to get paralysis from analysis, right? That's not what today's about. Um, I want the next couple of weeks for us to, you know, really be, um, you know, we, I mean, we've, when, when the rubber hits the road, you know, we've got to be, um, uh, you, you know, we've got to be in the right frame of mind, the right physical uh, shape, you know, to get out there and make the best of the opportunity. So uh, no paralysis from analysis. That's really not what that's about. It's also why I've not done any slides for it, because whilst I think it's important for us to be focused on, it's not really what I want us to focus on today. I think there are other things that we can be focused on. Um, you know, I really feel like um, the next couple of weeks um, are going to fly by. We need to roll our sleeves up. We need to get on with it because so many of us, um, you know, and you give you give me a yes, a why, a high five, whatever you want to give me. Uh, at the beginning of this, you know, we said we're coming back bigger and stronger, right? How many of you uh, set out in this, um, you know, with that intention, coming back bigger and stronger? So you give me some feedback. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we need. Uh, and Naomi said, yes, she still is. And so are, so am I, Naomi. Um, you know, uh, everybody here. Yeah, come on. Definitely. I love it, Gary. Um, and Daniel and I, you know, have spent um, a lot of time um, speaking to you all and helping you get your plans in place and helping you get focused. Remember, um, you know, for our Passion for Hair family, if you want training for your team uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, and I know many of you have already got this uh, planned. In fact, Naomi, your team are on training uh, a little bit later with um, Richard. So that's fantastic. We can get training booked for you with our educators. Um, our only restriction, of course, is our platforms, right? So we've got a couple of platforms, so we have to slot everybody in times. Now, at this time, I do want to share with you this. And I had this confirmed last week with a lawyer. Employers, you are able to require your team to attend training. If you require them to attend training, um, then that is um, that is absolutely something that you can require them to do. Despite the fact that, uh, that, that they're furloughed, you are able to require people, right? I cannot stress this enough. 
okay? Because as we come up to the last few weeks, you are going to require people to attend training. So they can't say, if they're on fail, they can't say, oh, I'm going to be shopping. You know, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. If you give them good enough notice, they are required, uh, you know, uh, uh, to attend that, that, um, um, that training. Failure to do so um, leads to a, um, oh gosh, I've got the bit of paper down, which I wrote it down the other day, the, 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 the legal part. But long story short, it can lead to disciplinary. So um, uh, I can see Mags has asked the question here, do you need to top up the wage? No, no requirement to top up the wage. Um, and so um, uh, um, absolutely you can require people to, um, to do that. Okay, so um, I'm going to take your questions today, you know, where I can off the screen, only by nature of what we're doing, all right, today. Uh, and you'll see a little bit um, more about that. So I know many of you are preparing your salons, um, and that's fantastic. Um, uh, I'm very sad to see that already we've got quite a lot of salons um, that, quite a lot of salons that have announced that they won't be reopening. Um, I think there's still quite a lot that we're going to see announce that as they get closer and closer to opening. I don't know about you, but at Feathers, we've had an abundance of CVs coming in. So um, this is quite interesting. When we see a lot of movement like that, of people looking for jobs, et cetera, et cetera kind of makes me you know, realize that there's also going to be quite a lot of client, you know, movement of clients. So that's good because what uh, I was talking to my business partners about yesterday, something that we're very concerned about is, of course, we're focusing on getting our clients in. Of course we are. Um, you know, we've got our VIP list. We've talked about that in previous seminars. Um, we've talked about how if you're Salon IQ, you know, you can get your top uh, top 100 spending clients. There's also a report there where you can get uh, the clients uh, who counseled. Uh, and you can also get a report that tells you the clients whose appointments weren't completed. So you're able to bring all that together. So we've already got lists and lists and lists of people that want appointments. But we also want to take advantage of those new clients as well. So um, and I can see Mags has said, you've had tons of new client requests. Yes, so have we. And so how we manage that, you know, is quite important because something I want to tell you, sadly, is that, um, you know, with all my contacts, um, you know, internationally, one of the things that's become very apparent, uh, and I'm sure that uh, many of you have realized this too, um, uh, is that the initial few weeks are, you know, a, a hell of a rush and et cetera, et cetera. But then it does peter off. Um, people are wanting, you know, to uh, space out their appointments, um, not only because of, um, you know, they're trying to economically, but also from safety. And people have realized that they can leave it a little bit longer, you know, and so for safety, that is what they are doing. So let's take all of those things into um, consideration. But what I really want to spend some time talking about today is the four R's and also how we do communicate um, with our clients as we move forward in the next couple of weeks. And what I've done, um, well, let's first of all um, look at the um, four R's. This is a really, I've spoke about this a lot in the last few seminars, right? This has to absolutely become part of our strategy in the salons. It's something we need to teach the team. It's, it's absolutely a way for us to really be able to maximize um, our exposure and what we're doing, right? And the four R's, here they are, rebook, recommend, review and retail that's the four r's now the thing about you'll see that i've put here communication because the four r's are a strategy that require a tremendous amount of communication a tremendous amount 
These are not new strategies, but they're strategies that have not, in my opinion, um, there's, we've always had more opportunity in these areas. And this is somewhere that we really uh, need to focus right now. And it's going to become apparent in the next hour as we talk about this, how much we are going to be able to leverage these opportunities. Now, I don't know whether any of you have, and you can give me some feedback about this, have heard the, the advert on the radio right now that has been put out on behalf of pharmacies by the Pharmacy Association. Anybody heard that, that advert? I actually tried to capture the advert. I really wanted to, you know, to bring it into the webinar, but um, I've not been able to. Okay, I can't see any response there. So nobody's heard that advert. Now I tell you about it. Um, a couple of people are typing. Has someone heard? Or maybe you, I don't know, maybe you, someone heard the advert? No, you've not heard it. Okay, so there's an advert out there. If any of you listen to LBC, um, you may have heard it on LBC. Uh, but basically, that advert is an advert that is telling people that pharmacies have been, um, they have been, um, uh, they do mention prescriptions on there, Georgia, but that's not the point I want to make. So pharmacies have been um, part of the essential workers from the beginning. They've been out there uh, fulfilling the prescriptions. That's the bit that they talk about. They've been open, their staff, they talk about, you know, um, uh, fulfilling the prescriptions for people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But what it actually says, this is the part of the advert that really caught my attention. What it actually says in the advert is this, it says, pharmacies right now are running at a loss. So they are opening all the time, but they um, only really for fulfilling prescriptions. Um, and being able to support, um, you know, the NHS and et cetera, et cetera, but they're running at a loss. And they said, we really need you to support us. Use your local pharmacy from, because the adverts have just been the last couple of days, because now, of course, the pharmacies are able to open the parts of their business, which is the non-essential part. So it says, please uh, support your local pharmacy. If you want your pharmacy to be there, then please uh, support it. When I was talking to Daniel about this, he uh, guided me um, towards a very good friend of mine, David, had put a fabulous post um, on on um, uh, on his Facebook. Uh, long story short, in his local area, and uh, maybe uh, Marcus is going to be able to help me here uh, construct this story, but in their local area, something has closed down. They live on the coast. I believe it might be like a um, a park, you know, uh, an amusement park that's closed down or something that's not going to be reopening, okay? And there'd been a little bit of, um, yeah, that's the one, Living Coasts. Is that an amusement park? Um, so I, I kind of read in between the last, I mean, if you're local to them, you would know what it is, right? But I think it's like an amusement park or something, but it won't be, oh, it's a wildlife park like a zoo. Thanks, Libby. Um, so birds under a big net and penguins. Anyway, there's been outrage, you know, people say, oh, this is terrible. It's closing, it's closing. And, uh, you know, David had written, well, everybody's, ra you know, ranting and raving that it's closing, but where was everybody when it was open, visiting it, supporting it, you know? If things are not supported, then we're going to lose them. And then he made another really good point about a theatre, a local theatre, um, uh, about a local theatre. Uh, people had been outraged about it. The local authority had then give it a grant to keep it going. And what David wrote was this. I loved it. He said, but the outraged still stayed away. Right. And it's a really good point. Now, what is happening here is that we are really getting a focus for our independent businesses, for our local businesses, um, and we've got to really maximise this to the to the you know to the ultimate that we possibly can because we need our local community's help, not just our clients, our local community. And if we, you know, when we talk about being bigger and stronger, it means that we've got to do things better, differently. You know, we've got to get out there before everybody else. Um, 
and uh, you know we've got to really maximize the best we can. So four R's is really about taking these strategies that are not new to us, but really making sure that we are maximizing them. And I, I, I spoke a couple of weeks ago about a letter that I was constructing for our clients um, a, a fair few of you have contacted me and said, oh, can you share with me your letter? Can you share with me your letter? I said, no, I'm sorry. It's WIP, work in progress. I have so many projects that are WIP, I can't tell you. Um, but it's work in progress. As soon as it's ready, I'm going to share it. And I'm going to share it with you this morning. It's not going out to our clients yet, but it is ready. It won't go out to our clients until about a week before we're opening, because that's when we're really going to set that communication live. If we communicate it too early, by the time we need it, it will be out of puff. OK, it won't be new anymore. So um, but I will uh, show you what we are communicating with our clients in a minute right now. So some of you already know about that, but I'll remind you, OK, because communication is key. The communication is really where we can get the edge, okay? Because all of these strategies are nothing if they're not well delivered and communicated. And that's really where we want to focus. It's where we're going to be focusing over the next few weeks. You'll see because we've got the rest of our program map mapped out up to the 4th of July. So you're going to get that at the end, okay? Um, and um, uh, let's so let's let's carry on. Um, that, um, yeah, that great post, Marcus. I don't know if Marcus posted the same, but I'm sure he did. It was a great post. I loved it. In fact, I'm going to go back because I need to take the opportunity to put the same kind of post, but personalize it. I mean, I've seen posts like that, of course, lots of times, but it was personalized. Do you know, on my drive back from, um, you know, from here in Milton Keynes, where we're based at Passion for Hair, to where I live, I, li I live a little way out, we live about 30 minutes away in the outside of the city in the countryside, three pubs have closed, three pubs, I mean, I'm devastated, but I've spoke to you about one of the little pubs that I drive past on the way home, I've spoke to you about that, where they've turned themselves into a takeaway and a little village shop. And Daniel and I stop there at least once a week to buy something. A loaf of bread is £3.50. The chef's out there baking all this bread. It's £3.50. Makes your eyes water. But I don't. It's delicious. But I don't care. I want to support that pub. I want them to survive. So a um, few people want to see that post, Marcus. I wonder, Marcus, whether you could copy and paste it um, and put it in your message here and then maybe um, put it in your message, right? And then when you do that, I'll stop so everybody can read it. That's great, Marcus. Fa fabulous. Because I loved it. Um, um, so let's, um, uh, we'll wait for Marcus to get that. Hopefully you've all written down the four R's. This is going to be a really important strategy for everybody. I want to show you one of the ways that um, we are communicating it. So this is the letter and I'm going to put the paragraphs of the letter. By all means, you can screenshot this. You can take a picture of it with your phone, whatever you want to do. And if you ask me by email, please, by email, please don't send me like a what some people send me a WhatsApp, some are messenger, some this, some that. I mean, my phone is... Uh, you know, it gets frantic. And what happens, I miss some of the messages. If you do it by email, it's really easy for me to attach, send, attach, send. OK, so if you want a copy of the letter, you're welcome to have it. So um, uh, this, of course, will one of the ways it will go out will be uh, by email. So this is the, the way that the email is set up. And that is because um, uh, you know, when it's got this funny little thing like that, it picks up the client's name automatically, you know, beyond my understanding. That's why we have, um, uh, that's why we've got the lovely Declan. He does that for us. Um, it's not the only reason I have him, by the way. I did not have a baby knowing that one day he would do the emails. I mean, that just come out wrong. Uh, but anyway, so here's what it says. Um Independent businesses are having a terrible time, right? So the same as the pharmacy, we're getting out there and we're telling people, okay? It's a good time to get, everybody knows what's going on, right? It's no, you know, no, no secret. 
Um, okay. Um, unfortunately, I can't copy and paste the writing. I'll post in business accounts later. Okay, that's great. Maybe Daniel, maybe Daniel can help us with it. Or Declan, Declan, do something so we can get it on um, here. Okay, because uh, anyway, independent businesses are having a terrible time and we are no exception. Having to remain closed for over three months has been devastating for us emotionally and financially. And it has. I've shared with you before. I'm a really strong person. I have found this like such an unbelievable experience um, uh, emotionally and financially. So um, then I go on to say the saving grace has been the furlough scheme. Having the team at home and safe with enough money to pay their bills has been a blessing right? And it has. Can you imagine, you know, had the government not put the furlough scheme in place? I mean, it would have just been carnage. But of course, something that we've all really got to understand is, you know, I don't even, I've lost count of the billions that this is costing the country. Um, I mean, this is just going to take us years to be able to um, overcome. But anyway, that's another story for another time. Um, it, the letter goes on to say, however, whilst the grants and loans have been a welcome handout, and they have, um, one a minute, my, this thing is over the top, I can't read it properly, one a minute, it, it, my picture of me is in my way, um, there you go, uh, whilst the grants and loans have been a welcome handout, our business has been left in a precarious position, and it has, Let, I've, I've shared already, one of my my biggest salon, uh, the one with the most this, the biggest rent. I just don't even know how it happened. Um, but we only got ten thousand um, uh, grant, right? Because we were literally like around five hundred pound less of getting twenty five thousand. So five hundred pound more on a rateable value. It's the first time in my life I've ever wished that my rates, my rateable value was higher. 500 pound more and we'd have been in the 25,000 bracket that 10,000 didn't even touch the sides for that business and unlike many of you I know I've been lucky with landlords we have we have had no luck with any of our landlords every single one of our landlords said you're getting a grant you know you're getting loans you've got to pay it right so we've had to pay it now you know we could and I spoke just yesterday to my accountant because the end of June so before we're even open we've got to pay another lot of rent uh, to some of our uh, landlords so you know we've talked about you know should we go cap in hand and should we kind of say can we pay over the next three months but we're kind of getting ourselves even more behind you know we've got that we haven't paid um you, you, we've got all of these things so whilst we're very grateful for those handouts that we've had now the other you, you know that there, there's another side to it the other problem that i have as a group and it's my problem not yours but the 50,000 bounce back loan can only be only you can only have that like if you're one business, you, you get one 50,000 if that if that's your turnover. But if you're like us, you know, um, uh, we are five, six, seven locations. OK, if you're seven locations, you still only get one. So we get the same 50,000 as other people have had with one location. That's just the way it's been. Now, I realize that, you know, we could get the other loan, whatever it's called, and we could go for more loans. But I've spent the last 10 years of my life getting myself out of debt. So I'm very wary of getting um, into debt. I want to try and get through without it. And thanks for your feedback, everybody here. Right, Ian, the same. Mags, me too, Debbie. It's good that we share. You know, one of the problems in business is that often we feel like an island. We feel like we're the only ones that are experiencing what we're experiencing. And that's not how it is. Normally, other people are experiencing the same things. Okay. So, um. Uh, um, I, I went on to say over 30 years in business, we've experienced some ups and downs and we have. So we've been, you know, this is not our first rodeo when it comes to recessions. We've been through a couple of recessions. I'm not afraid of a recession. We've talked earlier in our series of webinars about the lipstick factor. Um, uh, briefly, for those of you that have not heard of that before, the lipstick factor was uh, a phrase that was coined actually uh, during the Second World War, where they said during the Second World War, you know, um, where there was a terrible shortage of things and people, one of those things being money, 
uh, women still found money for lipstick. OK, and it became the lipstick factor. So when when there's a shortage of money uh, and when people can't afford uh, the bigger luxuries, they tend to indulge themselves in the smaller luxuries. And hairdressing is one of those smaller luxuries. So actually, what I want, you know, what I want us all to understand is that often during recessions, hairdressing salons can actually uh, do okay. I'm not going to, uh, you know, even do well, right, depending on um, you, you know, how you want to gauge what happens during a recession. But actually, every recession has made my business post recession, uh, bigger and stronger. Okay. Um, so, um, hi, Dina, you've not missed too much sweet. And if you have, I'll catch you up with it. So, um, uh, so yeah, so I'm not afraid of recessions, right? However, you, you know, this one's coming with a ton of other things um you know adding in uh added in uh and so what i did say is this one's taken the wind out of our sails now we've not stopped sailing right but you know we need uh we need a bit more puff i need a tissue and i'm i had a tissue here you'll have to excuse me one second i've got to go and get a tissue um i moved location uh here's my tissues uh, of course, I was in my, those of you who have been here before to Passion for Hair will know actually our warehouse is across the car park, the other side, the academies, this side of the car park. So I was in the office this morning and then <clears throat> I moved location over to the academy. Um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, so um, I moved over to the um, academy uh, and then moving i didn't have my tissue there normally better at being prepared so um anyway so we need a bit more blow a bit more wind in our sails that's um where we are that's that's where our message is right now the next the next it, the letter goes on to say as we move closer to being able to welcome you back into our chairs and work our magic in making you look and feel great we are busy preparing a new client journey which will mean we do things a little differently in order to keep you and the team safe once we reopen. We have written to you previously about your next visit and how your experience will change. If you want to see that letter again, it is on our website or we will resend it to you by request. The purpose of this letter is to ask for your help. So let me just go back to the client journey um i've already uh shared with you um a little bit about the client journey uh the roadmap some people are calling it um whatever it is that you want to call it if you want to see what uh what we have communicated with clients thus far it's on the front page of our uh feathers website uh, it's on so as you go to the website it's absolutely there on the website many of you may have already seen that um, but just to kind of help you and, and, and I'm sharing this with you because I know sometimes I don't know about you, but I sit down to do something or I know I've got to do something and I kind of, I get like a, a like a rabbit in headlights and sometimes you need that little bit of inspiration. So, uh, if you feel like you need a little bit of inspiration, that might help just get your kick started. If you need a little more help than that, if you want to use the dialogue, the words, or you want to use the flow of it and change it into your own words, you're welcome. Okay, just you do what you have to do to get your business, you know, get your business where where it needs to be. Um, okay, so as I say, that letter is there on the front of the website. If you want me to send you the uh, word document again, please email me. Uh, it's very easy for me to go attach, send, attach, send, not what WhatsApp messenger. I know that with a lot of you, I communicate with WhatsApp messenger and that's OK. But it's when when you're a lot of people are asking for one document, it just makes it really easy for me. All right. And I need it easy right now. So because um, we're so busy, but we'll do, that's we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're asking for your help. Then it has a heading how you can support us. Now we're coming to the four R's. OK, and this is our first communication. We're not sending this out yet. We'll be sending this out more like um, probably about the 24th of June. Um, 
maybe even a few days after that. But remember the Monday. Remember I, I shared with you a few weeks ago the Monday trick? It works. I promise you we're getting way better traction with our emails by sending them on a Monday morning. OK, so remember the Monday morning trick. So ours will be going on, our, our initial email will be going on a Monday morning and then we'll be using it on our social media um, and asking for my uh, email address. It's uh, Debbie Digby at AOL.com. Debbie Digby at AOL.com. I have all fancy, it drives Declan mad. You know, I have fancy email, Debbie at passionforhair.com and all that. But it all goes to Debbie Digby at AOL.com. And um, so, it, you know, that's all where it goes. That's the email I like. I love my AOL. I've had it, oh gosh, I must have had that email address 20 years. So, um, um, so that's, that's i'm hanging on to it yeah there you go look dinosaur thank you declan um um so how you can support us this is where we start talking about this you haven't got a, you can screenshot it if you want to screenshot take a picture wherever you want but i can email this to you so uh, subheading rebook your appointment by rebooking your next appointment you are helping us plan forward for the future we know life is busy and plans change that's why clients don't want to do it. It's why I don't like booking appointments, right? But we pl promise to be flexible if you need to change your appointment. In fact, for us, clients who rebook have priority. Oh, sorry, everyone. I don't made them go away i don't know how that's affected uh, the computer anyway yeah you can't beat aol um you can't beat aol martin um that's my view ah let's just go back over here marcus thanks um let's put the book into the appointment to one side for a second let's all focus on um I think it's one of those stupid calls as well. They're going to tell me I've been in a car accident or something, you know. Right. Um, actually, normally I give my phone to Daniel. He might come in here in a minute and take the phone away. Any luck? Because um, I don't need it here. Okay, so let's, let's look at this is the post. Okay, so Living Coasts, so this is the wildlife park, is sadly closing with the loss of many jobs. There are many posts on here blaming and criticising, but I ask you, when did you last go? When did you last spend money there? It was the same with the Palace Theatre. People were outraged it was going to close. They jumped up and down and it was saved, but the people jumping still didn't go. I love that bit. That beautiful little theatre is still struggling. The Mac shop in Exeter has closed. Again, blame and outrage. But if the outraged bought enough, if any make up from them they would be open i was told many years ago towns get the shops restaurants and attractions they deserve if you use them they will be there who's to blame it's a brilliant post i love it well done david and marcus um giving a little shake up down there to those um people it's such it's you know it's such a uh, a, a, a great truth it really is and you reminded me I had an email we have a little theatre near us and they do fantastic little things um, anyway and I had an email from them yesterday and they are they're clearly you know trying to find ways to get some income they've had to cancel all their programs we had um, uh, we had tickets put with them and we uh, put the tickets on but anyway yesterday they put out you can buy their you know their um I don't know, associate, you're associated with the theatre, supporting the theatre, whatever it is, yesterday. I'm going to go back today and I'm going to buy one of those uh, to support them. So it, it, they were saying, like, you get two years for one year or something. I don't know. I'm going to go and do it. So inspired by your post. Uh, let's go back to our rebooking letter to our clients. So um, 
uh, start at the beginning. By rebooking your next appointment, you're helping us plan forward for the future. We know life is busy and plans change. We promise to be flexible if you need to change your appointment. In fact, for us, clients who rebook have priority. Your name is in our book and therefore in our heart. Now, everybody wants to be the hairdresser's priority. Over the last three days, our clients are going bananas. I don't know about yours. They're actually getting angry with us, right? Because we are trying to work through and rebuild our schedule, as it were. We actually didn't want to start rebuilding it this quickly, but but we've had to because they're saying, well, my friend's got an appointment with her hairdressers. We've had uh, uh, Perry will give us uh, uh, a little, give me a little bit of, um, uh, give us a little bit of, um, uh, feedback on this, right? But we've got clients that actually get it. my head. My friend's hairdresser has already booked her an appointment. I want an appointment. Da, 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 da. I've got a really funny story. Um, uh, I don't. I, I actually don't know if I've told you this uh, story yet. But for those of you that know Susan Campbell, who's one of the owners of Census, many of you have met her. Okay, this is a story about Susan and her nail tech. Um, uh, um, have I told you this story about the nail tech? So what happened? I'll tell it again. So what happened was Susan's nail tech called her and said, um, we're able to start again. So uh, Susan, I've given you an appointment Thursday at four o'clock or whatever it was. Susan said, oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Put the phone down. Reflects on it for a little while. Suddenly realizes, hang on a minute. By the time my appointment comes round, she'd have been open for five days. And uh, if she's doing eight clients a week, well, Susan worked out she was something like the 58th client or something, right? And she was outraged that she would be the 58th client. So she rang her back. She said, I'm not happy. So um, anyway, long story short, she did find her another appointment a little bit earlier forward, right? Um, but that's, of course, where we're getting with our client. Everybody believes that they're the best client. So that's where where we are. So, um, yeah, clients think we are taking new clients over them. Thanks, Perry, for reminding me about that, which we're not taking new clients over them. We've got our lists and they are our priority, but that's what they think is happening. Anyway, so this is a good time to I was inspired by clients saying that, because if that's how they feel, you know, I want to tell them how to be. Uh, the best client, right? Um, your name is in our book. Um, and therefore, it's in our heart. We see your name regularly as we review our upcoming weeks. How does that old saying go? Out of sight, out of mind. So what rebooking also does is ensures you get your service timely. Without a rebooked appointment, you are only reminded that it's time for a visit to us when you have a bad hair day or two or three or four right it takes a couple of days for you to get round to calling us and then a few more days or maybe more before we can find the appointment that suits you right because when they ring up and they say you know i want an appointment with elaine or perry or whoever it might be very busy stylists and they've got a working schedule it can be weeks before we can get them the appointment they want um so it takes a couple of days to get around to calling us a few more days before we find the appointment that suits. And before you know it, you're way overdue a visit. And people know what an overdue visit feels like now. I know what it feels like, right? My hair, I'm so struggling. I actually did cut my fringe at the weekend. I had to do a, on Monday, I had to do a video for Euphora. And uh, because I'm um, I'm one of their special guests on July the 13th, hopefully you're not too busy everybody but we are teaming up july the 13th with uh, the us on an eson which is being done digitally those of you that did vision quest uh, that's what they're going to do and uh, i'm one of the presenters july the 13th so look out for that um so uh um we want to help you stay looking your very best with a regular hair routine so these are all things that we know but we don't communicate well and now we've got the attention of our audience we really have got their attention so let's make sure we make the most of that okay so um uh sophia uh, your team have got no childcare at the moment you're going to be one busy lady gosh gosh you are yeah but i mean 
surely they can do different days. I mean, if you want to talk to me about that, Sophia, it's very, um, very common. Right in the beginning, do you remember I said to everybody, it's calm at the moment, right? But the next thing is going to be all the HR problems down the line. Um, you know, so if, if somebody, you know, wants, if you've got a, a particular challenge, um, if I haven't got the answer, I'll endeavour to find it. But I have got a lot of the answers because I'm dealing with so many people with this stuff. OK, um, the next one is recommend us. The finest, com the finest compliment you can pay us is to recommend us to your friends. We would love the opportunity to look after them and promise to give them the same attention we give you. When you recommend a friend to visit us for the first time, we welcome them with 50% off their cut and blow dry. As a thank you to you, enjoy 50% off your next cut and blow dry. OK, so there's the recommend one. A smaller paragraph something we've been doing for a long time if anyone's got any questions then you ask them review your experience please uh, help us to build our reputation now you know when we in one of our web webinars we did that exercise when we said what do people buy so let's let's just recap what do people buy come on everybody give me a bit of feedback what do people buy yep they buy time what what do people buy Emotions and good feelings. Yes, good feelings, emotions. Yeah. And what else? There's fundamentally actually only two things that people buy, right? Look at this. The famous whiteboard. I can do it here, I think. There's fundamentally only two things because I'm not going to use the whiteboard on the computer. There's fundamentally only two things that people buy, okay? Solutions to problems. Hang on, trying to get it. Solutions to problems and good feelings. Good feelings, of course, are emotions. But fundamentally, people only buy two things. Solutions to problems and good feelings. The solutions to problems, the solution to the problem, that's what gets the client in the chair, right? So the solution is I've got roots, I've got a hair, you know, uh, I, I want a new look, I need a haircut, I can't see, my fringe is too long, whatever it is. Solution to problem, that gets the client in the chair. Good feelings is what gets you more money than any other uh, salon in your town, as it were, right? So the better we can make people feel, the more they're willing to pay, okay? Now, but having talked about how people pay, hope you all wrote that down. Let me, let me, I was going to turn it round, but I can't, there's something really important on the back that I need this afternoon. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so how do people pay? How do people pay? So you already come up with some of them. They pay with time. How else do they pay? Yep, they pay with time. They pay with their loyalty. Yes. How else? Money. Yes, of course. Whether that be physical cash or credit cards or whatever it is. And there's one more. There's one more. Let's see if somebody gets it. Recommend comes under loyalty. Feelings. Yes, feelings. Who put that? Maria, well done. Um, they pay with their emotions. Exactly. That's how they pay. So, so, oh, there you go. So people, there you go. They buy two things and they pay with four things. You see that? That's why, you see, you see when a client, like when you get a client complaint, she's not happy with her hair. And you do it again for free, but she's really, um, you, you know, she's still not happy at the end of it. That's because while she didn't charge her any more money, she had to pay again with her time and her emotions. Right. So that's why it's really hard to turn those clients around. Um, and that's why people say, I want compensating. That's what they're talking about. They want compensating for their time and they want compensating for their emotions. Right. And what they and when we don't get that bit right, what do they what do they take away from us? Our or their 
loyalty, right? In fact, what they do is they give us reverse loyalty. Who wants to tell me what reverse loyalty is? What's reverse loyalty? Negative review, slander, exactly. Negative loyalty, right? Clark says, I'll get you back. I'll put it all over Facebook. And she does. So, okay. So, um, that's good. I hope you're liking the new uh, thing in the academy. And you'll see a little bit later whilst I'm, why I'm changing our, you know, I'm changing our, our, our vibe. Okay. So, um, so where are we? Da, 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 da. Every, so please take time to review. So what we're doing is we're pulling on the client's like loyalty bit, right? So um, take the time to review your experience with us. Every review lifts the team and allows us to celebrate when the team does a great job. Each month, we randomly re reward one Facebook reviewer with a complimentary cut and blow dry. Remember, you have to be in it to win it, okay? So, um, so um, that's the uh, review your experience. Okay, now, we're really getting to the nitty gritty. Oh my God, did somebody say sales? Um, purchase your products from us. When you purchase your shampoo from us, you help to support our business. Right. So there's a couple of things here. Number one, I put shampoo because everybody has to buy shampoo. Even a bald guy needs shampoo. OK, when you purchase your shampoo from us, you help to support our business. So we're telling them you're supporting our business. We are like the loaf of bread for three pound fifty. You know, makes my eyes water. We went in there recently like last week. We're going in tonight, actually, on the way home because we need some eggs. We've been buying our eggs from there and they're farm eggs. And um, we bought eggs, eggs and a loaf of bread. And when I say a loaf of bread, it's like a, you know, when you go into a, a restaurant and it's what it is, is the chef is baking the bread, you see, it's beautiful. So, you know, when you go in a restaurant, you know, and you get these little sort of homemade loaves of bread and often they sort of slice it and put it on a, you know, on a board. It's like one of those. It's fantastic. Anyway, but so we bought a tray of eggs and, um, Try of eggs and a loaf of bread, and Daniel's gonna. Um, if I've got this wrong, it was nine pound fifty um, for some eggs and bread. Anyway, but it doesn't matter. The pub's open, so um, egg on toast. My favourite food, Matt. Egg on toast is my. I'd eat it every night. So um, we're passionate. Let's go back. We are passionate about beautiful hair, so we only use the finest professional products. Ingredients and formulations are important for the performance of products. We will do we will do our very best to listen carefully to your needs and recommend what will work best for you. Keeping your hair looking and feeling its best is 60% what we do in the salon and 40% what you do at home. We want to make sure you are well equipped for looking good every day. We understand that you have a budget. Your stylist will work with you to help you decide what is best for you and your hair needs. Now, I love this next bit, if I do say so myself. Our shampoos start from £8.80. And please remember, all our products are concentrated with ingredient to give great value and last longer when used correctly. So we're preconditioning the client to the fact that it's not going to cost you very much more or it doesn't have to cost you very much more. So please listen to us and let us make that presentation because even if you only buy a bottle of shampoo off us, right, it's going to support the business. Should you buy a, a product from us and you discover it is not working for you, we are happy to exchange it for another. We are passionate about you recreating your look at home. Okay. So now I can see you all saying that you love that. That's good. Um, I'm glad that you love it because the next level of communication on this, you know, apart from uh, digital is what? You tell me. How do we need to? Yeah, you got it, Matt. We're preconditioning the team, right? We're setting the team up ahead of the game. We say the client's coming through the door. She already knows. The client already knows that that's what we're going to be doing. Okay. So, um, 
So the next stage of this communication is the priming up the team, ready, and then making sure that when this when this this the client gets in the salon, this communication keeps keeps on, right? So our retail area's got to got to look great. We've got to look like we're in the retail business. Um, you, you know, you know, with our with our app, and I'm going to show you something fantastic um, a, a little while later with with uh, um, something fantastic with the app. And it's going so well, the app. Um, it really is. So um, thank you for everybody that's supporting that so far. And for those of you who have not got going and you need some help from us, reach out and let us help you because we're starting to understand what works. Um, you know, from those uh, people that have been really successful with it. And, and let me tell you, over the weekend, um, maybe Daniel, Rim, over the weekend, we had 14 orders over the weekend, right? So, so salons would be closed, if you like, over the weekend, orders are still coming in. We wake up in the morning, one morning we woke up, there were like three orders that had come in overnight. One of them was 4am. Someone at 4am was laying in their bed order it one of your clients daniel might be able to um marcus then let us help you okay because we know what works um yeah money while you sleep maybe daniel will be able to um tell us who it what whose salon it was that ordered at 4 a.m um ls your client bought at 4 a.m there you are jane one of your clients bought something at 4 a.m right uh, by the way, the average ticket price, Daniel, the average ticket price. Tell me what it is. It went down this morning. Um, £39.87. It was over 40 and it just went down to 39.87. That's the average ticket price, people. So your clients are going on and they're really, you know, they're buying. So this is fantastic. Anyway, um, and let's get it. We must get this up and running for you um, uh, before you get in the salon. All right. Because uh, remember, in the salon, we're going to have QR codes for your clients to literally just download. This is not to take place of your retail in the salon this is for uh the, the repurchase when the client can't be in the salon okay or for products that you haven't got in the salon because you can't we appreciate you you, you can't hold everything in the salon right it's not possible for everyone anyway um recreating your look at home maybe i should show that last slide deck show your last slide please this Oh, we're going to give you a preview. This is the ad that's going in Professional Hairdresser Magazine next month. Oh, so, uh, Matt, I cannot stop saying what you said to me. You said to me, because I said, oh, you watch everyone start copying, da, da, da. And Matt said, no, for a lot of these companies, the cat's out the bag. And once the cat's out the bag, you can't put it back in the bag. Right. So they're already doing business out there anyway. So on the left, of course, um, that is the advert that you use on your social media for clients. Right. That say download our app and buy our product and et cetera, et cetera. And on the right there, we can't really see it, um, Declan. But um, those messages there. Um, let's see if Declan can help focus it. No, not that. Focus in on the messages deck on the uh, phone screen because I think everybody knows that one. That's the message to the client. Uh, I think he's probably trying and it's not moving. But anyway, but basically it says, um, here we go. Thanks, Deck. There you go. So it says the future for retail in independent hair salons. We believe our industry begins and ends with the hairdresser. From its inception, the Salon Love app was created to support the independent salon and stylist. Salon Love is your 24-7 business partner. Maybe pop into the salon is not always possible or convenient for your clients. Having your products delivered to their doorstep is. And then right at the bottom, deck, right at the bottom, it says, what Salon Love offers you? Protects the repurchase, offers your clients convenience, showcase more products, and an extra revenue stream. Um, so that's that's for you guys. Uh, that's really, you know, the bit that I wanted to show today. I was like, yeah. So um, 
uh, that's that's fantastic. So um, yeah, Matt, I can't say that out loud, but um, yeah. So um, I'm so proud of this project. I can't tell you all those you know years of having to try and fight those companies. But anyway, uh, can you give me get, just get me back where I was, um, Daniel at uh, Declan, please? to the slide that I was on. So that's the retail uh, part, okay? I hope um, that's the retail. I don't know why you can't get me back. I think I ah, thank you. No, we've done that one, the next one, isn't it? The next one, please. No, the next one. Next one. Next one. I did that one, didn't I? Next one, yeah. Let's make sure we did. We understand that you have a... Ah, yeah, now. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, next one. I did that one. Next one, yeah. There we are. So there we are. We're passionate about you recreating your look at home. Okay, so next one, Deck. No, we've missed one. Have oh, no, we haven't. Right. Lastly... Lastly, we want to thank you for your support. We are so grateful. Without you, we would not have got this far. You are the meaning for our existence and we honour that with all that we do. You are the heartbeat that keeps our business beating and however you are able to support us is appreciated more than mere words can express. So at the end of it, I wanted clients to know, you know, don't feel that, um, you know, there's any, you know, there's any pressure on on sales as it were right if you're a client that you know really can't afford or whatever it is uh the review so in other words you haven't got to do all four you know the review would be paying us with your loyalty is enough right recommending your friends is enough uh we're looking forward to having you back in the salon with us and we are looking forward to having the clients back in the salon with us so um so uh so there we are um yeah, Claire said, yeah, I'm nicking that. Yep, yeah, you do that. That's what it's uh, that's that's what it's about. The last part is so emotional. Well, that's where it is, Matt. I mean, when I got my uh, managers and you know partners to proofread this for me, they said, you know, it's uh, it's so transparent and yet so true. There's never been a time in my experience to be able to talk to people like this. Right. And a lot of people might say and a lot of you might feel, oh, no. And even actually, I've got to tell you, even this morning, I said to Daniel, do you think I've gone over the top? Right. And Daniel said, no, I don't. So, um, um, uh, you know, um, Val said there it is emotional. The whole thing's emotional, Val. And I think we all feel that about everything, you know, uh, uh, absolutely everything. So uh, Ian's. Uh, got something here Debbie apart from all the other costs if we get a 50,000 bounce back loan then we come to repay over five years it will be over 200 pound a week so I will need to make sure that I take an extra 500 pound a week to cover it so the importance to do the four hours on our return is vital Ian <clears throat> that is so true I've been talking to you know to people about this for the last two weeks and saying what everybody's got to remember is that whilst it's for a year, we haven't got anything to pay. At the end of that year, you have got to pay something. Now, if you've got 50,000, uh, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, and I don't know how many weeks there are in your, let's have a look, 200 pound a week, because the payment, the payments are 890 a month, I believe, right? So yeah, if you're taking your weeks as like 52 weeks, as it were, 200 pound a week, but um, so you've got to take that extra £500 per week. It's a really good sum to share with everybody, right? A really good sum. Good point. Thanks, Ian. I appreciate you. Um, you over the top, never. Thanks, Richard. So um, it shows that they are valued, yeah? So um, I want to give, you know, everybody, I, I want to empower everybody to put your heart your heart's in it. I know your heart's in it. It's why you're on here. Hundreds of people, right? A thousand people have got an opportunity to be on here today and they're not. They're not on here. You are, right? So I know your heart's in it. Now what I'm saying is put your heart on it. 
lay it out. Um, get out there and make people really want to do business with you beyond what they, you know, oh, they do good hair, you know. Beyond that, we want people to like really do business with us. That's how we're going to get the four R's really, really working. 887.25 per month. Yeah, that's right. So we've got to go some, you know. Um, we've got to go some. Yeah. So uh, now let me share with you because if we do open on July the 4th, uh, universe, please make it July the 4th because. If it's not July the 4th, um, the government are going to have to come with another, you know, another program, right, or something. I just don't even know what to say. Um, if it's not July the 4th, when will it be? That's my question. Like, it doesn't get much more different with the current situation that we're in than, we're, than, than we have it already, right? The beaches, the parks the 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 protests people are out there shopping it doesn't how much more different can it get you know apart from us being able to do hair by wishing that it jumps off one inch at a time you understand what i'm saying like what else can happen nothing else there isn't anything else there's no magic apart from you know a vaccine at so um I, and I know it won't be the 4th of July in Wales. You're about two two weeks behind us. I know that in Wales. It, it won't be then in Scotland. In fact, if anyone's here from Scotland, um, you know, they're even behind Scotland. And do you know what, Michelle? You see this thing in Wales. I was talking to Claire yesterday. And I said to Claire, this is horrendous because um, you're going to have people in Wales, you know, they're going to be driving over the the bridge to get their hair done. Um, it's terrible, um, terrible situation. So, um, you know, I am sorry uh, to hear that in Wales. I, I really am. But um, anyway, know that we're, you, you know, you know, we're going to be uh, supporting you guys. Um, you also have the two meter rule as law. I mean, that's the other thing, right? Um, yeah, I'm literally on the border. I, I know. I thought we were talking about you the other day, a Andrew, and, and saying like, oh, you know, I mean, you, yes, literally, ten minutes, and people will be where salons can open. It's so crazy. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway, we're not going to get paralysis by analysis, right? So many times, I have to kind of tell myself off, you know, and sort of say, come on, Debbie, like, that's why I'm, you know, if you want. If you need me to see anything on social media, you have to tag me, right? Or tell De Daniel to make me have a look, you know, because honest, honestly, it does. It paralyzes me. Um, so uh, anyway, we're only focusing on, we've only got a couple of weeks left. And so I literally have sat down and I've done a roadmap to opening um, the the. For you salons that are in Wales, once the salons in England are up and running and, and are busy, we won't forget you, I promise you, okay? Like passion for hair. We, we, we'll be there with you. We'll do some little webinars. There'll be like 10 of us on there or something. It'll be a bit more than 10, but you know what I'm saying. So, um, um, with only when I actually sat down to do a program, I realized what little time that there is. And I saw a map put there. We've lost our three weeks to opening. Dentists had a week. So I think we need to get ready. So one of the reasons I've moved to the academy here is we are going to we're, we're going to change the flavor of what we're doing. OK, here's what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks. We hope you like it. So we're not doing a webinar this Friday. If you need um, any anything for your team to get up to speed with, uh, the Malibu webinar that Maria did is on the Passion for Hair YouTube channel. All of the webinars that Census did in the beginning for all of the Census brands, um, uh, we can they are up on the Passion for Hair stylist hotline. We can tag you in them if you need them. The webinar that uh, Andy did, Richard did, uh, the webinar that uh, Jude 
uh, did last week. If you missed it, it was phenomenal. And I have gone all out. My people will tell you personally all out to make sure every single one of my stylists watched it. And yesterday, I was personally chasing them up and telling them that if they did not have the answers to the quiz to me by five o'clock, right? So because it was phenomenal and I don't know how any hairdresser is going to confidently stand behind a chair without seeing that webinar. I'm telling you, they're going to they're going to end up if they think that they're going to, you know, stand behind a chair and deal with clients in the way that they were um, you know, um, Claire said she's going to rewatch all in preparation. I know, and I saw Maria put good idea. I know Ma Maria was watching Jude's this morning. Maria, uh, I'm also a Marco Polo. I love Marco Polo because I can walk and send messages at the same time, right? Um, Maria sent me a Marco Polo this morning with Jude's webinar in the background. So yes, watch a uh, watch a couple of times, right? Can you have the quiz? Yes, you can. Um, uh, you, make sure you ask me um, the webinar that Jude did, Sophia, was called uh, something, it was a lockdown locks, um, preparing lockdown locks. It'll be on, it's on our YouTube. If you, so if you go to the Passion for Hair YouTube channel, it will be on there. It was last Friday's webinar, okay? You re-watched it, Michelle? Yeah, it was really good. So, um uh so all of those reruns we've got and we can point you in the direction of those anything you th we think that we've got everything covered this is the next couple of weeks running up okay um wednesday next wednesday we are in sales live from the passion for hair academy with debbie and daniel yes daniel and i will be here we actually don't have to social distance um right one of the things we're going to do and this is why i've changed my location today one of the things we, we, we we're not very happy with the way that um uh, it works with two presenters in different places it's quite difficult so we're actually going to do the webinar as if you're all in here in the in the academy with us okay. so that's what we're going to do um that's, so good that that's coming up so um sorry but i don't know what you can hear the other side so daniel and i will be here uh and we're going to be in and the whole presentation is going to be we are in sales right so we're going to teach the team um that we are in sales everybody's got to understand that you know um uh it's going to be a little bit the survival of the fittest and i must remember to start the um the live next week by uh with the story of the puppies right and for those of you that don't know the story of the puppies uh so i want us to imagine that there's a little bowl of um food down on the floor and we've got nine little Labrador puppies, right? And now whenever you get a litter of nine uh, puppies, you know, you're going to have at one end, you're going to have the little fat bully boy, right? Um, you know, it's going to be sort of the leader of the gang, right? All the way down to uh, number nine, right? And he'll be the little runt of the litter, okay? The little runt of the litter. Now, when you put the food down, right? Off goes bully boy and his gang, round the bowl, what happens to the little number nine little runt? He gets pushed out, right? So now, if you are watching this and you're an animal lover, okay, what happens? Well, you pick up the little runt by the scruff of his neck, don't you? And you give him his own little bowl over here. And when Bully Boy and his gang come over to try and you go, no, get back, get back and your greedy thing you know and all of that now unfortunately life is not like that and when it gets when the going gets tough right everybody has got to understand that we've got to fight for our own dinner that's what we have to do it's the natural selection of life and so um uh we're not going to pull any punches we are in sales and it's really important when we go back that we make sure 
that um, you know we don't just have a lovely day reacting to what it is that clients say they want. Um, another letter that I'm working on right now, uh, and I will share it with you all um, somehow. Um, uh, another um, letter that I'm working on, uh, another uh, communication with the clients is one where it says, in the until September, we our service, which is uh, root tint, it's not called root, root tint, I can't even remember what it's called, but th that service is not even available until September because we haven't seen anybody for three and a half months. None of our clients have got normal roots. They might tell us, oh, well, I've, yeah, I have only got little roots. But if they have only got little roots, it's because they've put two box colours on, right? So that service is not available. Um, there are other, you know, they'll be guided towards other services, okay? So um, so we've got to understand, uh, we've got to get our teams to understand. We're in sales. It's really important. Uh, the way that we approach um, this uh, they've got to make their numbers. If they don't make their numbers, the business might not be able to support them, right? Because we can't support people who are not, um, you know, not delivering on their numbers. Um, we, we can't do that. Uh, the business, the whole business will collapse, right? So um, uh, that's that's what we're doing next week. I'll sit back down, otherwise you'll be looking only at the ceiling and up my nose. Um You've not heard that story before. Oh, I'm surprised. Okay, it's one of my favourites. I love it. So, um, on Friday the 26th of June, we've got Eight Steps in Euphora, live from the Passion for Hair Academy with Nicole and Carly. So, for all our um, Euphora accounts, um, uh, make sure that the team are on this one, okay? Okay. Um, uh, I know that some of my team are actually planning to watch it together, social distancing, of course. Um, so uh, Nicole's driving all the way over here. Yeah, we spoke to her when we had this idea. She was the first. Carly doesn't live too far away um, from the academy here. In fact, uh, she was here yesterday and she's going to be here this afternoon. She's been doing some educations from the academy. Um, uh, be 11 o'clock. Always, yeah, it'd be 11 o'clock um, in answer to your question, Martin. Um, so Nicole's driving all the way over. Thank you, Nicole. She said that she'll do that for us. We appreciate it. I cannot wait to see her in person, uh, albeit that I won't be able to give her a hug. Um, but she's coming over and they're going to be uh, live from the academy. And I'm loving this. When I had this idea, I was so excited. I get excited because um, he, uh, Daniel coined a phrase about two weeks ago. He said, oh, God, everyone's getting webinar fatigue. And they are. And, that, and then I thought, oh, gosh, yeah, how do we make this webinar a little bit different? And I thought, right, we're going to make it as if we are all in the room together but we're not. So the girls won't be sitting down at the screen like this. The girls will be up and uh, they'll have, you know, all their props and the board. Um, we can probably, by making this go, in fact, by making this go back here a little bit, right? Can we see, right? And so we want to make it so that it's, um, um, yeah, really uh um, amazing yeah so and nicole's got to suggest that's why i've got it here so that i can yes matt's saying role play yes there will be role play um uh yes you must register in the same way maria nicole says watch the euphoria nation page as the business team are each week posting about the eight steps my team is step two and step five yeah nicole we saw you you did a great job so proud of you. So, um, and I know that um, a few of you have been watching um, uh, I know that some of you have been watching um, um, don't look, Declan's saying we'll talk about this, maybe need to update the production value a touch. I knew he was going to say that. So um, maybe we can get like a Camp, well, I, Declan will sort it out. So, um, uh, yeah, so that'll be really good. I know some of you have been watching the Euphora, um, uh, yeah, the Euphora Nation page. 
there has been some really good stuff on there. So that's good. So we're going to, uh, that's what we're going to have on the 26th of June. Remember what I said, you are able to um, insist that your team do attend these webinars. On Wednesday, the 1st of July, look at the date, guys. It will be just a few days before. It's called Stylist Ready, Steady, Go. Okay, live from the academy here with me. It will be two hours, um, uh, really getting people ready uh, emotionally, um, getting them uh, ready, uh, really focused on the pointy end, right? Uh, when the rubber hits the road, um, we need to be ready to get going. So um, that's where we are. Oh, I did that one. So that's where we are. Um, let's see, we've got some questions here. Can we register for all these today? They will, if Declan's not already done them, he'll be able to tell us. He'll have them up this afternoon. Um, Claire, so if people have got questions, ask ask your questions now. So, um, Anna, uh, Anna, okay. So if they're not up yet, I can see Declan typing, they will be up. They'll be up this afternoon, okay? So just make a note to yourself to come back this afternoon. Um, uh, do we register? Can we register for these today? So you register in exactly the same way. Um, and yes, you'll be able to register this afternoon. Um, I can see that Claire asked a question there and it's not in a question box. I'd love to see more census colour webinars. So um, Claire, you if you go to Passion for Hair, Passion for Hair Stylist Hotline, um there's a series of census webinars there uh daniel if you're um if you're listening here now if you're still listening on the question and answer um can you tag claire please in those so watch those um and then the one last friday with jude um on the youtube channel okay are there any more questions there deck No. Any more? No, nope, that's good. Okay. Well, uh, tag you as well, Tracy. Yes. I hope someone got that behind the scenes. Okay, guys. Well, um, that's it until next Wednesday. But remember, if there's anything you need, you know where we are. Um, and um, you, you remember, um, you needed today to keep focused. Ian, whenever you need that focus, you know where we are. So um, thank you all so much. Uh, the next couple of weeks, um, yep, let's keep rolling. And um, uh, yeah, let's let's be prepared for some really uh, fantastic um, results for us all. Um, have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you soon.